It's burger time. For me, there's nothing more nostalgic than a cheeseburger. But I know I'm not the only person who feels this way. So today, we're reaching out to some experts to answer this question. What is your favorite burger from your childhood? What is the burger that pulls on your heartstrings? So get ready as Tasty's Chef Rie and the legend Wolfgang Puck take you down memory lane. And of course, your boy's got something up his sleeve too. Maria from Tasty, and I'm so excited to be on the burger show. <laughs> <laughs> I like baking a lot. I make a lot of pastry for Tasty Page, but today I'm so excited to make teriyaki burger. So teriyaki burger is something nostalgic to me. I'm from Japan, and I grown up very rural area and I didn't have any burger chain restaurant. When I went to high school, I went to a little bit city side. So every Saturday, me and my friends go out and eat burgers for lunch. If you go to Japanese burger chain, like McDonald's or Mos Burger, you can find the teriyaki burger everywhere. In Japan, we have this dish called hamburger, which is Japanese Salisbury steak. And I grown up eating this hamburger all the time. So I kind of wanted to make pate. It's kind of like a hamburger, but teriyaki burger. All right, so first thing you want to work on is patty. In Japan, it is usually half and half of ground beef and ground pork. Now I'm going to soak panko with milk and I'm putting ground beef and ground pork and season with salt and pepper. Add soaked panko and egg. Mix together. Purist people may be gasping right now because I'm <laughs> adding so much ingredients. I don't have a title as a burger scholar. <laughs> and I'm gonna shape this into kind of thin patty. I think I can make two. Here. And I'm going to put a little bit of oil. Like smash. So it kind of gives a nice crust on the bottom. The juice is clear. I think it's great. I'm going to rest the pate and I'm moving on to the sauce. It's kind of inspired by my mom's sauce that she makes chicken wings with, sake and mirin. We use mirin a lot for Japanese cooking. It kind of gives nice glaze. I'm also adding sugar and soy sauce. And I'm adding a little bit garlic. While it's reducing, I'm going to toast buns. I like brioche because it's kind of rich and buttery. Put some butter. Toast it until it's golden brown. In Japanese, we call kitsuneiro, which is fox color. Okay. Put a little bit mayo on the bottom. QP is something like staple mayo for Japanese household. Put this burger in a sauce. It kind of covers. Put lettuce. I'm going to pour extra sauce and mayo. Here we have it. My Childhood memory lane teriyaki burger. Oh, saucy. Oh. Mmm. Crunchiness from the iceberg lettuce and kind of charred bottom of the burger. Kind of salty and sweet. It's all you want. Like, juicy. I feel like now I'm hanging out with my friends. Thank you so much for watching and Chef Wolfgang Pak, take it away.
I did not grow up in Austria eating hamburgers or cheeseburgers. You know, there was no burger chains in Austria or anything quite like that. So I grew up with Wiener Schnitzel and we made a Wiener Schnitzel burger. I could call it a Wiener Schnitzel sandwich or a Wiener Schnitzel belegtes Brot, how we would say it in German. But I think for me, it's better than any hamburger in the world. My mother made it for me uh, on Sunday lunch, not for me, for the whole family. If you don't know what a Wiener Schnitzel is, let me tell you. Now, Wien is the capital of Austria. In America, we call it Vienna. So Wiener Schnitzel is a scallopini, which is breaded in flour, egg, and breadcrumbs, and fried to perfection. Now I'm gonna show you how my mom did it and the way I still do it today. Most important part is you pound your meat really thin. Veal is really the best way. You put your meat in a Ziploc bag like I have here, and then you pound it gently. So this is really important. We want it thin, but not too thin. Then we have to season it. Salt and also pepper, fresh ground pepper always. Now, if you have a pepper mill, you have to go like this. This you push with the button. This is America. My mother didn't have that. Are you ready? I'm gonna show you how we bread the Wiener Schnitzel, all right? Okay, here we have the meat. I'm gonna put it first in flour on both sides. Okay, a little spanking, huh? you like that, huh? <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna put it in the egg, cover it on both sides, and then last but not least, we're gonna put it in the breadcrumbs. Unfortunately, I immigrated to Indianapolis, or I should say fortunately. There, they had a, a chain called White Castle, and they made hamburgers. And I said, what the shit is that? A square meat body in a roll. I said, okay, I'm done with the hamburger. I'm going back to my Wiener Schnitzel. It's much better. I love brioche buns. So we're gonna put it on a griddle here. Okay, I'm gonna make the dressing for my slaw. A little bit of the mayonnaise, some white wine vinegar. Mix it together. All right, a little olive oil. All right, we're gonna put a little sugar in here. This is traditional Middle European cooking where a lot of things are sweet and sour. We're gonna mix our cabbage. The white cabbage, the red cabbage. You know, it's great to have it, to have a little color. A few cucumbers for crunchiness, extra crunchiness, and some carrots. And if you like bell peppers, a few bell peppers. Perfect. Are we ready to fry? Let's check one more time the temperature. My mother did not have a temperature, a thermometer like this, like we have here. What did she do? She used a little leaf of cabbage and throw it in there. Now when you fry a schnitzel, be careful when you put it in the oil. So always put it in toward you and then let it drip to the other side slowly. Don't throw it in like that, so always away from you. You can see the schnitzel starts to swim. Okay, and we move the oil a little bit. So that way the breading fluffs up a little bit. All right, you can see how nice and crispy it is. That's really an important part. Mmm, I love the smell. All right, now we're gonna assemble it. We're gonna use some coleslaw. All right, just like that. Squeeze a little lemon juice on it. Then comes my favorite, a little bit of the lingonberry. So this is a little sweet and sour. You know, we didn't have ketchup in Austria, but we had a lot of paisal bear and we picked them in the forest and my mother made marmalade out of it. I didn't see ketchup, I don't know, until I was probably 20 years old. My Wiener Schnitzel burger here. Squeeze it nice together. Mm. You know, what I remember the most about my childhood, at least the good part, 
is the food, the food my mother used to make for us. Mm. Now I'm grown up. What are we gonna have? A little Austrian wine with it. Mm. Perfect. You all see what is on the front here. How are you all doing? Well, we are doing amazing because we are having a Wiener Schnitzel. But look at the back. What, the, what does it, what the fuck does it say on the back? I can read on my back. Don't get too crazy. If you do, call me. Alvin, take it away. You won't get a Wiener Schnitzel like that anywhere. Hi, I'm Alvin Kailan of The Burger Show. Welcome to my home. Today, we're making the Sunday gravy burger. I actually make a big pot of red sauce every Sunday. It's inspired by my love for mafia movies. And usually when we have leftovers, I turn them into burgers. And that's what I'm making today. So I wanna take you back to that time in my life. I was a young, hungry cook. I worked, you know, 12 hour days. I got paid $3 an hour. So, you know, when I get home, I'd be super tired and I would make this burger right here. Now I'm gonna show you how it's done. You already have all of this stuff in your refrigerator. You have the red sauce. Maybe you have prego or ragu in your refrigerator. That works too. You have pesto, you have parmigiano, reggiano, compound butter, burgers, fresh moths, provolone, and a nice hoagie roll. You slice it, but you don't go all the way through. You leave it hinged. So what we have is this garlic compound butter. It's literally just garlic, parsley, garlic confit or roasted garlic, and fresh garlic. You just smear the butter on, and then you're just gonna sprinkle Parmesan cheese. First step to this smash burger is getting your meatball and rolling it in Parmigiano Reggiano. It creates a really good crust, and it's phenomenal. It's like one of the best tasting things you can do. I'm gonna do these one at a time, because you, you wanna focus on the crust that this makes. All right, we're gonna give it a flip. Bam! Hey, look at this fuck in my eye. Get over here. Check this out. <laughs> Two more times. All right, so now that the patties are done, we're gonna toast our garlic bread. Just like that, look at, listen. Ooh, look at how we look it. Oh, that's burnt. <laughs> I'm gonna flip this back down. Boom, look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I have this Sunday gravy that took all day to make. We're gonna put it on the bottom of this roll. We have green sauce, AKA pesto, for the top part of the roll. We're gonna put our patties down, shingle it, some provolone cheese, fresh mutts. We're gonna grab the torch. And then what we've all been waiting for, cross section, check this out. Look at that. Sunday gravy burger by yours truly. Look how good that looks. Looks fucking great, right? Make this at home. Go ahead, go ahead. Look at that cross section. We have the colors of the Italian flag. That's a good burger. We have a super tasty tomato sauce. The pesto adds mad freshness. The cheese, who doesn't like fresh mozzarella? It's so good. And the Parmesan smashed into the burger patty. I promise you, you've never had anything like that. And you're welcome. But best of all, this reminds me of being a kid, just being adventurous, being creative. And really that's what this burger is about. So give it a try. I promise it won't let you down. Forget about it. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed this segment of the show. And remember, don't get too crazy. If you do, call me. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Alvin Kailan of The Burger Show. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If not for me, for the burger.